Welcome to the inaugural lecture of Li Xu Fan Medical Foundation, Professorship in Clinical Oncology by Professor Tony Ma. May I now invite Professor Joseph Song, Vice Chancellor and President of the Chinese University of Hong Kong, to give a vote of thanks. Professor Song, please. Dr. Go Ingman, Secretary of Health and Food, Dr. Walton Lee, member of the Board of Governor of the Lee Shifan Medical Foundation, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great honor to have Dr. Lee here with us today at the inaugural lecture of the Lee Shifan Medical Foundation Professorship in Clinical Oncology. With the munificent support of the Lee Shifan Medical Foundation, the first Lee Shifan Medical Foundation Professorship in Clinical Oncology was set up at CUHK in December 2012, with Professor Anthony Chen becoming the first incumbent of this prestigious position. This year, we are very grateful to have the continued support of the foundation in establishing the second Lishui Fund Medical Foundation Professorship in Clinical Oncology. The establishment of these professorships enable us to further advance in teaching and research, as well as fostering academic development. The Foundation's objective are to promote and support medical education, research, and charity in Hong Kong. May I also invite Professor Francis Chan, Dean of Medicine, Professor Tony Mock and Dr. The Honorable Ko Wingman, Secretary for Food and Health, to join the group photo, please. May I now invite the members of the Hospital Management Committee of Hong Kong Sanatorium Hospital to join the group photo. May I now invite Professor Francis Chan, Dean of Medicine, to introduce Professor Tony Mock. Lung cancer is among the top cancers in the world. At least, it is as important as colorectal cancer. Recent advances in the identification of biomarkers and signaling pathways have brought revolutionary changes to the treatment of this once deadly condition. These new developments have opened the floodgates to the growth in personalized medicine which not only improves survival, but also raises the quality of life of our cancer patients. And behind the war against lung cancer is one of our heroic warriors, Professor Tony Mock. His landmark study establishes the role of a new treatment in lung cancer patients with epidermal growth factor receptors. Now, on a personal level, I've known Tony for more than 15 years. We share one common belief, that men hardly grow old, right, Tony? <laughs> but more importantly, Tony is a very humble physician. Instead of showing off his outstanding clinical achievements, Tony prefers to appear as a rock star on TV shows. <laughs> so if I say Tony's research is carcinogenic, he himself is definitely photogenic. Now, Tony, we can't wait to hear your declaration of war against cancer. The floor is yours. It is a very joyful and uh, honorable day for me to receive the Lee Shu Fun Medical Foundation Professorship in Clinical Oncology. This is indeed one of the best days in my life, and I'm glad that you're here to share with me. But despite how good this day is, unfortunately, I have to talk about war. So why war? What exactly is war? If in doubt, we ask Wikipedia. It's an armed conflict that's characterized by extreme violence, social disruption, and economic destruction. But for that, these are the image of war, for which you see pain, agony, suffering. But under the same note, if you look at the image of lung cancer, you see also pain, suffering, and agony. 
So in fact, we are at war with lung cancer, whether we know it or not. And for that, if you look into one of the countries that go to war a lot, which is United States, these are their casualties. 9-11, about 3,000 people die. And then about 16,000 people died at Afghanistan war. And the Iraq war, civilian and US uh, soldier together, 160. But that all add together is equal to one year of lung cancer death in the United States. So other than pain, agony, and suffering, we also had a lot of casualty. Looking back home in Hong Kong, in the past 10 years, there's about 15% increase in number of lung cancer. Yes, the lung cancer, the colon cancer is catching up quickly, but we're still very important. This is actually one picture I always love to show. This is what does it mean by target therapy. So this poor guy holding a target, you hit the target, the target fall, but you hit the poor guy, the target will also fall. <laughs> so for that, we actually have to define what exactly what I talk about in target therapy. And in this review article in Nature Review, that I say the important thing is to know a biological oncogene, which we can identify this day. And then we must have a very specific test on individual patients to show that that gene exists in patient A or B, and then I was able to prove that it worked with the drug. So those are the three basic criteria for target therapy in my opinion. So lung cancer, not 85% non-small cell lung cancer plus 15% small cell lung cancer. Lung cancer is 30% EGF mutation post cancer, 5% L positive. I did not have time to talk about ROS1 or the rats. But hopefully, we were able to find one gene at a time and knock them off one gene at a time. This is my vision, how to fight your enemy by knowing them better. So this is one way, but I want to tell you what I really think what's going on. I think... This is what we know, this is what we think we want to know, but this is, we don't know what we don't know. There's so much out there, there's still a black box with lung cancer and other cancer that we actually do not know what is going on many times. And it would take a global effort to discover this big portion of unknown about lung cancer. And that's why I'm most appreciative of Dr. Lee's and the Li Xufen Foundation helping us to fund this type of research to go into the unknown area. I would like to quote Vincent Churchill, victory at all causes, victory is in spite of all terror, victory however long and hard road might be, but for without victory, there is no survival. Molan 無論是政府、藥廠、醫生、病人、護士,只要我們大家一起,我絕對相信我們有機會戰勝長將。多謝大家,多謝。